Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. The story of the PGA's merger with the Live Tour is as much a story about corporate America as it is sports. Jay Monahan, the PGA Tour commissioner, who was uh, uh, using 9-11 families to shame players who left the tour over the last year and a half to go to live. Yeah, you know, I don't know how they reconcile, would reconcile this or explain this to 9-11 families. Because you don't have to apologize if you're on the PGA. That's what That's he said. What yep, exactly about a year ago. And that didn't go unnoticed. 9-11 Families United uh, Chair Terry Strada, who lost her husband at the World Trade Center. PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan co-opted the 9-11 community last year in the PGA's unequivocal agreement that the Saudi Live Project was nothing more than the sports washing of Saudi Arabia's reputation, but now the PGA and Monaghan appear to have become just more paid Saudi shills. They do, and Monaghan has responded, I know people are going to call me a hypocrite, but this was for the good of the game. Grow the game. Was it? Jim- here, here he is yesterday, all excited. Well, he was on CNBC. We've recognized that together we can have a far greater impact on this game than we can working apart. Yeah. Because uh, collaboration is always preferable, even if it's collaboration with bad actors. Is it? Uh, Jimmy Dunn, unless you're in the golf world or pay particular attention, you might not know who he is, but he's a a real power broker. He's on the PGA Tours policy board. He um, is an executive at Piper Sandler, an investment bank in New York. And he's a member at Augusta. He's a member at Seminole. He's he's a big deal in golf. Okay. Um, this is what he said just last year, Jimmy Dunn, about the Live Tour in an interview with Sports Illustrated. By the way, um, he was playing golf on 9-11. Otherwise, he would have been in the office at the World Trade Center at his firm, which was then Sandler O'Neill, and probably wouldn't be with us. Wow. And he said that. He said that I would not be the fairest judge of Saudi involvement, but he called the live tour the Saudi tour. He's a, I, he didn't want to talk much about the Saudis, according to the Sports Illustrated reporter, saying after losing so many friends, as I said, I would not be the fairest judge of Saudi involvement. So he gets it. He also said a year ago, I don't like when they say they're growing the game. That's crap. I don't even like it when they say I have to do what's best for my family. I really wonder how many of those guys, the lifestyle that they were living was so horrible, their family needed them to do this. Just say, I'm at a point in my career where I want to make five times as much money against weaker competition and play less. Just tell the truth. Don't cover it with a lot of crap. I agree with that. And that's what it was. He also said of the noxious Greg Norman, Luckiest man in the world. He's had this vendetta his whole career and found someone to bankroll it, right? He's had a vendetta against the PGA Tour, which uh, allowed Greg Norman to become, you know, pretty close to a billionaire between uh, his time on the tour and the, uh, the the clothing line that was developed because of his time on the tour and celebrity associated with his time on the tour. He's garbage, Greg Norman. Absolute garbage. But he also said, Jimmy Dunn, that he was talking to Arnold Palmer about the X factor. And uh, he he talked about, you know, if you put all these guys on the range, the the top 300 golfers in the world on driving range, the difference in skill level are, are barely noticed, but put them on a course and some guys have it. And some guys don't meaning some guys can perform under pressure, hit shots under pressure. And some guys don't. And he remember that talking, he remembers talking to Arnold Palmer about it. He remembered when he lost it. And Arnold Palmer says, it's hard to define when I look up, and, and and Jimmy Dunn saying, when I look up and down the people who are on the list on the Saudi tour, it's guys who never had it or lost it. You show me who, who on that list has it. It's a tough thing to keep. It's hard. And in golf, it's fragile. And it goes in and out. Jordan Spieth looked like he lost it, but he didn't. Rory ebbs and flows, and he's never lost it. It's hard to keep it. And this is after Dustin Johnson, Patrick Reed, DeChambeau, had gone over to the tour, the live tour, I mean. There's just something about doing something where you can't buy your way in. You have to go out and do it. 
You're starting back from scratch again every Thursday. If you don't play really well, you're going to lose money for the week. That's integral to the golf tournament. That's got to be that pressure. And, of course, with the Live Tour and the contractual payouts of 50, 90, 120 million dollars over three or four years, there wasn't that pressure. And it showed if you watched any of the live or you saw any of the scores from otherwise uh, once top players. Uh, but now there's some suggestion that Jimmy Dunn was uh, instrumental in brokering this deal between the PGA and the live. Oh, really? Boy, that was, boy, boy, how times change over a year. And I get it. These are, you know, it's, it's, this is a transaction. Maybe they saw no way out. They had to do this. Did they? Or could they tell those players, if no one is bigger than the game or no small group of players is bigger than the game, why wouldn't part of the deal, I mean, it's sort of like talking about Dominion and Fox, this deal doesn't make sense to me. Why wouldn't part of the game to protect the players who stood by the tour, the Rory's and the Spieth's and the Tigers and the Justin Thomas's and John Rahm's say, uh, um, I hope, uh, uh, it's too bad, Cam Smith, It's less too bad for most of the rest of them. I hope you uh, enjoy your money. Consider it severance pay. You're not coming back on the tour. Why couldn't they do that? Golf wouldn't survive. For more on this and other matters related to this huge sports and corporate sports story and story about corporate America, please be joined by our friend Barry Cronin, longtime sports writer and uh, now the editor of the Chicago District Golfer Magazine. Barry, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Amy, for having me. Brandel Chambly, uh, you know, former pro and Golf Channel analyst who's been perhaps the most outspoken critic of the live and those golfers who left the PGA for the live, said yesterday was a sad day in golf. Do you agree? I think it was a sad day in golf. I think um, Brandel's uh, position, um, which is um, – it takes sort of the black and white moralistic position, right? Um, uh, it's a bad thing. The Saudis are bad people, um, and and we shouldn't be associated with them in any way. Um, and and I think from a moral purity standpoint, that's correct. But unfortunately, uh, life uh, intercedes, right? And and these moral decisions become more gray than black and white. And I think that the uh, lawsuits that the two parties uh, filed against one another uh, were pretty much a pretty solid motivator to to have these guys get things done. Um, Both of them, uh, because of the rulings of the uh, Northern California federal judge, um, the the PIF, the Saudi guy, Yasser Mm al-Rahman, Uh, he's the governor of the Saudi Public Investment Fund, and he's also Mohammed bin Salman's right-hand man. Bin Salman built him a $60 million house down the street from the castle, right, in, in Riyadh. So they're tight. Uh, he would have been deposed um, as part of uh, this, 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 this litigation. Same thing with the PGA Tour. Um, all of their – all of those guys would have been uh, – uh, deposed, uh, Monaghan, uh, other people involved with the tour, um, uh, people who were with the USGA, people affiliated with the Masters and the PGA, um, you know, and, and I don't think anybody really wanted that to happen. In well, Barry, addition, how many lawsuits were thrown out or dissolved yesterday with this merger? I, I believe two, because I think the, uh, uh, the, um, the, uh, the the Live Tour sued the PGA Tour uh, for uh, uh, restraint of trade, uh, for being a monopoly. And then the Tour uh, sued Live for uh, poaching its players uh, oh. illegally. So those two lawsuits were dropped. And while the Saudis uh, could, uh, could you know, pay as much money for, for legal as, uh, you know, till the end of time, the PGA Tour can only pay so much. And here's the other thing I was going to say. Well, I mean, I, I don't know about that. Well, well let, me just, let, me just, let me just say this, Dan. Already, Honda, which, which sponsored the Honda Classic for, you know, 30 years, more. They were the longest sponsor on the PGA Tour. They dropped out. AT&T, longtime sponsor of the Byron Nelson Classic uh, down in uh, 
down in their hometown of Dallas, uh, dropped out. Um, from what I understand, other um, corporate sponsors of the PJ Tour uh, were lining up to get out. Now, I have to say, John Deere just re-upped for three more years, um, so that's that's a, a different situation. But um, so and and the uh, the PJ Tour, in order to compete with Live, they basically adopted their business model which is to have these $20 million, quote-unquote, designated events throughout the season. Well, $20 million is a lot of money per event. So by that, you're retaining your players, but you're paying a lot of money. You're paying so much money. And you're trying to run the Corn Ferry Tour, the, uh, which is the developmental tour in golf, the minor leagues of golf, and they have a couple of other minor league uh, operations going. So... Um, you know, they, there was some there was some financial incentive to get mm. this going. Now, wait a minute. I know you're a. Pre- it's, I on. mean, it's a couple. It's a it's a it's a multi billion dollar business. They get no, no. They, well, uh, you know, they get they get they well, they, they do seven hundred million dollars a year in TV uh, TV well, rights. But, but Dan, it, last a couple weeks ago, or last week or a couple weeks ago, the Live Tour was on Channel Nine, CW, and uh, the PGA Tour was on. Channel 2, uh, CBS, at the same time. And I was sitting on my sofa flipping back and forth, back and forth. Harold Varner was leading the Live Tour, and I saw names that I, uh, that I knew. Now, I knew the names on the, on the CBS, too, because I follow it. But the average person, Harry Hall, Austin Eckroat, um, you know, there's some guys on the show. Who are these guys? Well, they're guys who played the Corn Ferry last year who people don't know. The only guy within uh, on the top of the leaderboard, the top five of the leaderboard, was Scotty Scheffler. And when Jim Nance came on CBS, he said the whole thing was he was promoting Scotty Scheffler to yeah, maybe understand. win this tournament. I yeah, understand. yeah. So, so there's a difference in you know, and I'm talking about the average person. Um, so anyway, go ahead, cross well, examine. Well, I mean, look. So I, the the whole deep pockets thing. Um, yeah, I actually I want to get well. Um, the PGA had money to, to fight this. And, um, yeah, I get, you know, one week, you know, live to PGA. That's going to happen. But the other thing, too, is you have to take at least a medium-term view because this is not a fly-by-night operation. You can take a medium-term view. And the medium-term view is that, you know, Dustin Johnson's 38 years old. And some of the names that you might recognize on the Live Tour, they're going away. They can't compete really even more anymore on the PGA Tour. Now, some can and some can't. But then you have, you know how good the players are in high school and college these days. You're going to have people come up just like just like JT did, just like Jordan Spieth did just a few years ago, and they're going to be the next crop of Jordan Spieths uh, and Justin Thomases and Rory McIlroy's and so on and so forth. I mean, it's cycles. And as as John Rahm said when he turned down the live money, he said, look, the PGA Tour, this, the, you know, the money's not going to change my lifestyle. This is what he said, and he's right. Um, but the, the PGA tour means something. The memorial means something. The heritage means something. You can't just telescope the history and the tradition and the competition. And so if guys mostly on the end of their career or who didn't have much of a career, you know, didn't win uh, on the PGA tour very rarely did want to go over to live for a cash out, then go ahead. We can, you can Bryson D the game is not uh, smaller than Bryson DeChambeau and Brooks Kepka even. It just isn't. And they could have taken that view and they didn't. Uh, they didn't. And, um, and, and, and I think, uh, but it's interesting. Why didn't they Jimmy Dunn? You mentioned Jimmy Dunn. Uh, Jimmy Dunn lost friends and colleagues, as you said, on nine 11. He, he, the Saudi relationship, uh, he recoils, it, at it, right? He's good friends with Rory McElroy. He helped Rory's father get into Seminole Golf Club, which is one of the most elite in the country. Yeah. So he's he's close to those guys. So why does a guy like Jimmy Dunn broker this deal? And uh, I read, some, read something yesterday where uh, where where Jay Monahan, who who really had a lot of incoming yesterday from PGA Tour players at their meeting, uh, the the players were mad. Yeah, they called for a leadership change, and there was like a standing they ovation. They asked for him to resign. Yeah, absolutely. And he stood there and took it. 
So I think uh, – so what happened was uh, there's an argument to say that, hey, wait a minute. The PGA Tour, he is CEO now of this whole operation. Uh, Live Golf is really going to go away. Its name is going to go away. Now, there's going to be, there's gonna be a, 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 a separate side of the business, but he's going to control it. Uh, uh, this fellow Yasir Al Rahman, he's going to be the chairman of this uh, of this operation. But but really, the PGA Tour and um, uh, Monahan's people are going to retain control of what's going on, and they basically doubled the amount of business that they have from two hundred billion to four hundred billion. What were that? What what? Going back with, to with go, this deal. Go go on, go go back go back to the why were they afraid to be deposed? Well. Uh, I don't think that, uh, the, well, the, number one, the PGA Tour uh, and, and, and the other majors, right, USGA, Masters, PGA of America, they really run the world golf rankings. Uh, and and, and, it's, and if, you, if, I were a, if you were a lawyer for, um, for Liv, you could certainly say, hey, this is a monopoly. These guys run golf. They are the guys who are on the board of the world golf rankings which are refusing to give world ranking points to our players, which is unfair. Oh, that, you, uh, you know, and they can, and they could get, they could get a judgment for $3 like the USFL did against the NFL. They could, they could. And I don't think that uh, Mohammed bin Salman wants his guy to be deposed. I'm he sure doesn't. he doesn't. No. Uh, so there you no. go. So, I mean, no, I said, so what leverage do they really have? Well, I think there's, well, I think there's skeletons in both closets, right? Yeah. And I also think, too, I think that uh, the Saudis saw that their their model, right, what they're doing uh, wasn't really catching on that great. There certainly was no TV audience at this point. Um, they had some good events. Uh, they, their Australia events were good because the, uh, the Aussies love golf and they're totally neglected by the golf world. Um, so they've had some good events. And, and I just think, feel like, you know, they just figured – Hey, we'll we'll just fold in with the PGA Tour and, and these other golf organizations. We'll put up a bunch of money, and then we'll be part of it. And if you think about it, Dan, they asked to be part of it. Uh, they went to the uh, to Jay Monahan in 2021 and and asked to be part of it. And he, you know, he gave him the Heisman. He wouldn't do it. Well, let let, let me. What about the the players on the live versus the players on the tour and the coming back? And you know, I, I su- yeah. suggested at the outset. You know, to tell that part of the deal should have been uh, all you guys who took the money and the live, consider it severance. Uh, enjoy your life. You're not coming back on the PGA Tour. You know, get one on whatever tour you want to get on, but it's not going to be the PGA. Why couldn't they do that? Would the players on the tour now who turned down the money, would they have supported that? Uh, hard to say, but I do agree. That's going to be the, 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 the most difficult, thorniest issue in all of this. Um, uh, because Nicholson got two hundred million dollars uh, in order to pay off his gambling debts, I guess, and uh, you know DJ got one hundred and forty million, and 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 Hideki Matsuyama turned down two hundred fifty, three hundred million. Uh, Ricky Fowler turned down seventy five million, um, and you can imagine what, what Rory and yeah, Rory exactly. and Jordan Spieth. I exactly. mean, my gosh, hundreds of millions. So. Um, you know, how are those guys going to be made whole by all this? And talk about betrayal. I mean, Rory McIlroy, Rory McIlroy not only didn't not take the money to go to live, he, unlike a lot of these American pros, which I find really pretty reprehensible, they didn't stand up like Rory did to stand up for the American tour. Great. Here's an Irishman standing yeah. up, an Irishman from the European tour standing up for the PGA tour. And, you know, there's a lot of guys who really went silent. Um, so that's – and I don't think they cover themselves in glory doing that either. But uh, uh, anyway, so yeah. – Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting to see how that works itself out. I'm being very interested. I'm sure Rory and some of those guys are thinking very carefully about what they want to say next and the tack they want to take because they have a lot of leverage too. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I, I'm sure – Jimmy Dunn is probably trying to get everybody together, but um, that sounds like it's going to be difficult based on the treatment that Jay Monahan deservedly got from the PGA pros yesterday. We'll see. Barry Cronin, a uh, longtime uh, golf writer and now the editor at Chicago District Golfer Magazine. Barry, thanks as always. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line.
Coming up on Chicago's Morning Answer. Well, we'll talk more economics, but we'll expand beyond uh, the golf industry. Uh, macroeconomics with Steve Moore at 838. But now straight into the newsroom we go. Here is Mike Scott. Amy and Dan, 61 in sunshine, hazy for the afternoon. And we're following several.